Hello, my name is Noor Atira Faiza. So now I will explain about the schematic diagram of our design and then I will explain a little bit about the OPM amplifier that we use which is LM741. So we go to the component list first. So RF that we use here, we vary the value which is uh, 5 kilo ohm, 8 kilo ohm and 10 kilo ohm. And then we fix the value the R1 and R2 to 5 kilo ohm. And as I said earlier, the OP amplifier that we use is LM741. Okay, now I will explain about the LM741 pinout diagram. So, uh, actually, the LM741 is a bit different with the, uh, with the other OP amplifier, which is, as we know, the common one, it has 6 pinout, right? So, for this one, we have 8 pinout. So, we go, uh, I will explain uh, for each pinout function. So, we go to the pin 1 and pin 5 first, which is the offset node. So, offset node is actually used for offset voltage adjustment. Usually connected to voltage show meter to nullify any voltage offset at the output. And then, uh, for the pin 2, uh, we can see it was the inverting input but for the negative voltage. So, the input voltage at this pin is compared with the voltage at the non-inverting input which is at the pin 3. I uh, will explain uh, after this. Uh, and then, uh, and then I invert the input to determine the output voltage. So we go to the pin 3. It's actually the same but it's for the positive voltage. So the input voltage at this pin is compared with the voltage at the inverting input which is pin 2 to determine the output voltage. Okay now for pin 4. Pin 4 is actually the power supply but more specifically for negative voltage. So it connected to the negative power supply voltage which is negative VCC provide negative voltage reference for the OP amplifier. For pin 6, pin 6 is the output. So this is the pin where we uh, read the output voltage. We get the amplified signal value. Uh, so we get from the pin 6. For the pin 7, pin 7 is actually the same with the pin 4 uh, but more specifically for positive voltage. So it, it's connected to positive power supply voltage which is positive VCC, provide positive voltage reference for the OP amplifier. Pin 8, pin 8 is actually no connection with, uh, or we call it as NC because it is not internally connected and often left unconnected. So the voltage characteristic of LM741 is actually it has high input impedance with low output impedance. So because of that characteristic, it can be operated over a wide range of voltage. It also can be used with single or dual power supply. But the limitations for this uh, OP amplifier is actually it has a limited bandwidth and also a relatively high input offset voltage and not suitable for high frequency applications. So what are the applications of LM741? So the application of LM741 is actually commonly used in audio amplifier, signal conditioners, active filters, voltage followers and instrumentation amplifier. So, why we choose this LM741 is because it's suitable for both basic and more advanced circuit design which is good for educational tool for understanding basic analog electronics. My name is Isa Farisha Bufiu Maiser and I will talk about principle and function of the circuit. For the principle of operation, the basic of principle involves using the feedback configuration of an operational amplifier to convert the input current into a voltage. The OPM adjusts its output voltage to keep the voltage across a feedback resistor constant. The voltage across this resistor is proportional to the input current following Ohm's law, which is V equals to I times R. Next, let's delve deeper into the operation of a current to voltage converter using an operational amplifier and functions of each component. The first step, the converter starts with an input current, I in, that needs to be converted into a voltage signal. The input current will flow through a feedback resistor, RF, and according to Ohm's law, the voltage across this resistor is given by V equals to I in times RF. For the operational amplifier configuration, the OPM 
is configured as an inverting amplifier. In this configuration, the inverting terminal, the negative terminal, is used as the input and the non-inverting terminal, the positive terminal, is typically grounded. The input current is connected is typically the input current is connected to the inverting terminal of the OPM and the feedback resistor RF is connected between the inverting terminal and the output. So due to the high open loop gain of the OPM, a virtual short circuit is created between the inverting and non-inverting terminals. This means that the OPM strives to keep the voltage at both terminals equal. So the OP HS is output voltage be out in such a way that the voltage at the inverting terminal is virtually the same as the voltage at the non-inverting terminal. This is achieved by adjusting the output voltage to produce the necessary voltage drop across the feedback resistor. The relationship between the input current and the output voltage is given by the formula V out equals to negative I in times RF. The negative sign indicates that the inversion introduced by the inverting amplifier configuration. So lastly, the output voltage will across the OPM is the converted signal. It is proportional to the input current and can be measured or used as needed in the application. In summary, the OPM continuously adjusts its output voltage to maintain a balance between the inverting and non-inverting terminals resulting in a voltage output that is directly proportional to the input current. So this configuration is widely used in applications where the conversion of a current signal to into a voltage signal is necessary such as in photo detectors or other sensors that produce a current output. Greetings and hi to Dr. Tamir Selvi. My name is Vex Sejuali. Today I'm going to present my uh, subtopic which is input and output requirements. So this is on the left hand side is the schematic of the OP amplifier LM741 and then this is our design of current to uh, voltage converter. So the maximum input current for this converter or for this OP amplifier is 5 mA for our value of 10 kilo ohm and then the output voltage according to our experiment is from 1.5 to 12 volt. And then the cost circuit gain is depending on this RF, which is the feedback resistor. For application, we have photodiodes, photomultiplier tube, and also the gas sensor. So the concept here is basically we need to change the small input current into a desirable amount of uh, output voltage. Why? Because of course the small input current, we cannot do anything with that. So we need to uh, amplify that by changing it for a significant voltage value. Then we can analyze it using, for example, oscilloscope or any analyzer okay furthermore uh, of course uh, some gas sensor for example uh, it has a standard value of voltage value it can detect so of course uh, when the current is too small so this gas sensor cannot detect so we need to change into a significant volt amount of voltage output value first so this is the animation as you can see over here this is the electron flows throughout the circuit and then it will uh, flow into the output pin of the OP amplifier. As per the individual discussion, so uh, in terms of efficiency, so I could say that this is actually our first initial design which is not quite accurate and efficient because uh, according to our calculation, the V output is proportional to input current and RF. Okay, But after we uh, rectify our design, so this is the better one with high sensitivity whereby the V output is proportional to this K value. So K value is depends on R1 and R2 and of course the feedback resistor. Okay, so the efficiency, we define it to be sensitive to any, uh, it can convert small change of current into higher output voltage. Okay, in terms of suitability, so for when, whenever there is an application of converting small input current into a measurable voltage, then our design is suitable. For example, as mentioned, is the photodiode, chemical sensor, and also audio equipment. For practicality purposes, same, uh, same as previous, so our design is very practical and very easy to use. Okay, but things to note is the feedback resistor, of course, we set this to be gain, and then we need to choose this carefully because we need to have our desirable voltage output and the RF, R1, and R2 value, we need to set it to be minim minimum value so that we can uh, increase the maximum sensitivity. That's all from me. Thank you.
So here is the advantage and disadvantage of this circuit. So this circuit's advantage is the first one is the photo detector interface. So it commonly used in optical communications and photo detector applications where the output of a photodiode is a current signal proportional to incident light intensity. The converter transforms the current signal into a voltage making it easier to measure and to process. So the second one is it has low output impedance which is the output voltage of a current to a voltage converter typically has a low impedance which facilitates the connections to subsequent stage of electronic circuit without significant signal degradations. And the third one is the linear response. So when properly designed, current to voltage converters can provide a linear response over a wide range of input currents, allowing for accurate and reliable signal conversion. So now, let's discuss about the circuit's disadvantage. So the first one is noise sensitivity. So current to voltage converters can be sensitive to noise and care must be taken in the design to minimize the impact of external sources of interference. The second one is limited dynamic range. The dynamic range of the converter may be limited by factors such as noise, amplifier limitations, and saturation effect. In some cases, additional signal conditioning may be required to extend the dynamic range. The third one is parasitic capacitance and inductance. So parasitic capacitance and inductance in the circuit layout can introduce the unintended effects affecting the converter's performance. And proper layout and shielding techniques are crucial to be taken. Hello, my name is Ternisha and I'm Team 2. I would like to present about noise on operational amplifier circuit. Operational amplifiers are very sensitive to noise and interference that can decrease the performance and accuracy. Noise can come from various sources such as power supply, fluctuations, electromagnetic fields, thermal effects, or component mismatches. Well, before that, what is noise? Noise refers to any unwanted signal or random electrical signals or fluctuation which interfere with desired signals in the circuit. The experiment we have conducted may interact with the noises which cause the data to be altered. We can see the cause of the noise by calculating the percentage of error or compare our result with the theoretical results which gathered by the experts. So the common noise in a circuit is thermal noise, short noise and electromagnetic noise. Thermal noise is a type of noise due to random motion of charge carriers in a conductor at finite temperature. For example, the operational amplifier is very sensitive to heat thus in the laboratory we reuse the same operational amplifier which causes the sensitivity to change and causes the noise. The short noise. This noise arises from the discrete nature of electrical charge. It occurs when current flows through a conductor composed of individual charge carriers such as electrons. And electromagnetic interference. External electromagnetic field either from other electric electronic devices or from the environment can induce unwanted signals in a circuit. There are ways of reducing the noise in operational amplifier. The simple and most important way is to filter the power supply. Power supply noise can affect the operational amplifier's input offset voltage or to swing and stability. To filter the power supply, you can place capacitors known as decoupling or bypass capacitors across the power supply pins of operational amplifier or ferry bridges or low driver regulators. Another way to reduce noise in operational amplifier circuit is to optimize the signal path between the input and output stages. The signal path should be as short and direct as possible, avoiding unnecessary loops, bends, or crossings. The signal path should also be sheltered from external noise sources such as other components, wires, or traces. We can also reduce noises in operational amplifier circuit is to design the feedback network carefully. The feedback network 
is the circuit that connects the output of the operational amplifier to its input and determines its gain, bandwidth and stability.